Johnson is a risk management and commercial insurance specialist with the Central Cal Carolina Agency in Mooresville. The title of this speech is Perfect, which details a sports event that occurred in the turbulent 1960s. Delivering project number three, nope, yeah, project number three from the storytelling manual, the moral of the story, please welcome Steve Knopf. Thank you, Lisa. Fellow Toastmasters, guest Michael, you showed up. Scared me to death. 90% of success. You put, you, you put me on a pedestal, man. <laughs> we have some people here with a little gray hair. A few. Just a few. Picture, picture 1960. Can anybody picture that year? Can anybody? Who can picture that year? Few can, right? I was born in 1957, so I can't picture it, but I grew up in the 60s. I don't look like I was born in 1957, right? It was a turbulent time to start out innocent. Who was elected? President John F. Kennedy, right? He didn't even win the popular vote. Tremendous hope for America, but right directly as he became elected, what was on the board? The Russian Cold War. We were frozen. Khrushchev. The country was locked. Nuclear fears. As that progressed through the 60s, what also occurred? What escalated after Kennedy was assassinated? The country went into mourning. The Vietnam War. Do we not remember that? The Vietnam conflict? America was in a depressive state. It remained that way all the way through the 60s. But I'm going to focus on one particular event that happened in the mid 60s. Vietnam was escalating to a point that people never had any idea what, what we were really getting into. On September 9th, 1965, approximately 51 years ago, there was a significant event that happened and it was involving a young man. It involved baseball. Baseball, calming sport, right? Mm -hmm. All right, has anybody played baseball before? Anybody played professionally? Okay. You see this little <coughs> thing right here? Six ounces, right? Take your finger, flip by your ear real quick like that. 90 mile per hour fastball, can you hit it? It's a tough game, people don't realize it. But America needs a respite. So on September 9th, 1965, a young gentleman who was born in 1935, at the age of 19, he was coaxed to become a major leaguer right out of high school. He could throw a mid-90s fastball, he wanted to be an architect. He was a cerebral guy really hadn't, didn't have a lot of interest in baseball. He was Jewish, and there weren't a lot of Jewish ball players in those days. But this kid was a stud. He was a stallion, but he was untamed. He was in the majors, and he was with the Los Angeles Dodgers. And for five plus years, he struggled. He, his record was 30 and 40. Not so good. His ERA was 4.57. What that means is for every nine innings, he allowed almost five runs a game. A good ERA is in the threes. So this kid struggled. And you would think throwing mid-90s fastball, he's a left-hander. All right, left-handers were rare. It's about three to one ratio, or four to one righties to lefties. I was a pitcher. I'm a righty. Hated facing lefties. They're just weird. Different brain. Um, but this kid was struggling, so he took some time off and had to get totally re-engineered because his mind just wasn't there. He couldn't get it together. So he got coached and he turned his game around. And what he did is he slowed down. He slowed down the action. If anybody watched that All-Star game last night, which probably most of you didn't stay up that late to do it like I did, um, 
they get jazz. Players get jazz when you're young. You just the game is fast. You've got to be able to slow the game down. So this kid, he slowed it down well enough. So in 1965, on September 9th, and up to that point, there had only been a couple of games that were truly perfect. Now what's perfect? It's 27 outs, no walks. What's a walk? Four balls. Take first base. It's really tough. I've pitched four. How do you not throw four balls? Incredible. Three strikes, you're out. The batter's up there swinging. It, you're ba the batter is battling you. It's not easy up there. It's, you're in throwing the dirt. Only a couple, a handful of perfect games had ever been thrown up until 1965. So this gentleman, Sanford Braun, he takes the mound in Los Angeles in front of 29,000 fans and Vin Scully was the announcer and I cannot duplicate him. He is an immortal guy and I've got it on my iPhone. If anybody wants to hear it, it takes about eight minutes to hear it and it's one of the most um, stellar performances that you'll ever hear from a broadcaster. And I'm going to read this and it's not really appropriate in Toachmaster to read a lot, but I think it's important and I cannot duplicate his feet. But he strode to the mound in the eighth inning and up to that point he had struck out um, about 12 guys. He had put out 24 in a row. He had only owned three to go. Three. No walks, no whatever, no um, hits, nothing. It was tough. His, his stomach was tight. The first guy, Chris Cruz, curveball for strike one. Then a fastball for strike two. And you could just feel the pressure. You could taste it. And he steps out and just adjusts. Another pitch, outside, ball one. A one and two count, a curve ball, a foul ball, a wind up, ball two. People are seeing the pitches with their heart at this point, and a two two count, fastball swinging. He got him. 12 strikes outs to this point. Next guy up, Joe Amistelano from Southern Cal. Foul ball, strike one. It's one out at this point. Curve ball, foul, now 0 and 2. Batter steps out to steady himself. He knows the history. Batters love to break up perfect games. Gets up. Swings. Strike three. He's out. Two outs. The crowd is on their feet. Harvey Keene is coming up to buy it for Bob Henley. It's at 9.44 p.m. Fastball strike one. Next pitch too high. A force pitch. Actually his hat fell off. He overthrew. First time all game. Next one. Fastball, two. Keen was waiting on a 2-1 pitch. Strike two. Two and two, strike one more. Crowd is going berserk. Crowd wild. Next pitch, strike three. Place erupts. Perfect game. Sadly, one year later, he had to quit the game. Arthritis in the elbow. His record, 160 and 57. Up to that point, if I recall, it was 30 and 40. So for the next 70 years, he had the best um, uh, record in the major leagues. Thank you, fellow Toastmasters.